Let's start at the control box. Keep in mind when using a travel carriage and track system to provide the forward travel, it's not recommended to attach the control box to the carriage. Centrally locate the control box in relationship to the gouging area. All required cables should be based off this location to the workpiece. These connections run from the power supply to control box and workpiece. First, thread the pipe nipple on the air regulator to the side of the control box labeled Air In. This connection should be wrenched tight. Once the air regulator is secure, connect the incoming compressed air line to the air regulator. By turning the adjustment stem clockwise, charge the compressed air supply to a pressure between 80 to 100 PSI. Next, attach the AC power cable to the connector labeled Input Power. Loosen the screws holding the control box cover plate. Reposition the plate so the connections are visible and tighten one screw to hold the plate in the open position. Confirm the DC power supply is off, and then connect the positive power supply cables of the DC power supply to the bus bar terminal on the control box labeled Power Supply In. This connection must be wrenched tight to avoid overheating of the connection. Next, connect the negative cables of the DC power supply to the workpiece and attach one end of a number 12 insulated copper signal wire to the workpiece at the same location. The other end of the number 12 insulated copper signal wire should be connected to the ground post on the control box labeled signal wire. Connect the power communication cable to the side of the control box labeled power supply. The other end of this cable must be connected to the DC power supply being used to supply the welding current. Refer to section 4.04 control box installation in the operator's manual and referring to the power supply control connection chart Locate your machine and make this connection based on the information shown. Now let's set up the torch head. These connections run from the control box to the torch head. First, mount the torch head using the mounting hardware supplied with the N7500 package. Feed the DC power cables through the black rubber cable boot and connect the DC power cables to the torch head bus bar and connect the opposite ends to the bus bar terminal on the back side of the control box labeled Power Supply Out. These connections must be wrenched tight to avoid overheating the connection. Once secure, be sure to slide the cable boot over the bus bar on the torch head. Return the control box cover plate to its original position and tighten both screws. Next, Thread the 3 8 inch NPT threaded connector on the air hose assembly to the torch head 90 degree elbow and the opposite end to the side of the control box labeled Air Out. Slide the rubber boots over the connection on the torch head and control box. Connect the torch head motor cable assembly from the cable connection on the torch head to the connector on the side of the control box labeled Torch Head. Finally, let's connect the remote pendant to the control box. Connect the remote pendant cable assembly to the remote pendant and to the control box outlet labeled Pendant. Plug the Travel Systems grounded power cord into the receptacle labeled Power Outlet. You are now ready to position the torch head and insert the electrode. Positioning the torch head should be done based on shop conditions and application. Start off by positioning the torch head above the workpiece. Use the supplied angle gauge to set the torch angle, electrode stick out, and align the air nozzle. The air should flow between the electrode and